David Suzuki doesn't believe his own gospel. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. Like most progressives, environmental guru David Suzuki believes in one set of rules for him and another set for the rest of us. This week, Suzuki flew all the way to Ottawa from his home base in Vancouver to attend a climate change rally. He was joined by thousands of believers, most of them bust in from outside the nation's capital. Suzuki took the stage making weird comparisons between the Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor and climate change. But at its core, Suzuki's message was like that of his uh, progressive hero, Barack Obama. It was all about fundamental transformation. But the climate crisis makes us see that we have to transform the way we live on this planet, our relationship with Mother Earth. And it goes right down to what do we eat? How do we move? Where do we live? The transformation in agriculture, in forestry, in fisheries, in cities, in industry, in transportation. We have to commit. So Suzuki wants us to transform. He wants to transform the way we live in every way. When he says we've got to transform agriculture, he means go backwards. This is a man that is called Cuba's farming system, a system that can't produce enough food for its people, the largest program of organic and sustainable agriculture ever undertaken, and a system that offers critical lessons for the developed world. He has lectured people on driving less, on flying less, and yet he shows up at a rally in Ottawa, all the way from Vancouver, speaks for just a few minutes, does the photo op, taken at the front of the protest march before slipping off and walking away as the march begins. Suzuki doesn't travel less. I mean, according to offsetters.ca, a website that lets people pay their climate guilt through offsets, that flight spewed out nearly two tons of carbon. Canadian Geographic tells us the average Canadian emits nine tons of carbon a year. That's everything they do, driving, going to school, going to work, heating their home, cooking, everything. Suzuki's flight to Ottawa to call for more action on climate change, it's about a quarter of what the average Canadian does in every way. That doesn't even count as his flight to Oakville, Ontario earlier this month, or his blue dot tour that crisscrossed the country calling for climate change action and a change in government. This man's carbon footprint is huge. He's freaking Bigfoot. And yet he lectures the rest of us to transform. And he draws thousands to hear him speak. And those thousands that came out in Ottawa, they weren't locals. They were bussed in, mostly from Montreal and other parts of Quebec. Organizers bragged that three out of four signs were in French. That's a real sign that this wasn't an Ottawa rally. While I mean, those were bussed in AstroTurf protesters cheering on Suzuki and demanding action themselves. But while they're doing that, the buses that carried them to Ottawa, the buses that were waiting to pick them up, they were idling. All right, hear that bus, hear that roar of the engine? That's what we're hearing up and down the street. Why? Because it's a, a march against climate change. So you're going to have bus after bus just idling on the street. These buses have been idling while Suzuki's been talking about climate change. While all these people have been marching about climate change, they've been sitting just off Parliament Hill, spewing carbon into the atmosphere. But don't worry, always remember, this is do as I say, not as I do, liberalism at its finest. And as if that weren't bad enough, the protesters ended their march on Parliament Hill where large screen TV was parked showing images of other climate change rallies. And it was parked on a sidewalk in front of Parliament running off a truck and generator. More carbon spewing, more do as I say, not as I do. These guys preach a gospel that they don't believe in. They tell us that we've all got to change or the planet is doomed. If that were true, Suzuki would be changing his jet-setting lifestyle. If they believed what they said, Suzuki would have sent a video message instead of flying across the country for a, a few minutes of speaking in a photo op. If they believed it, then those buses would have been turned off, not sitting, letting the engines idle for hours. But they don't believe what they say. They just believe in lecturing you. They believe in taking control. They believe in trying to make government bigger to push their agenda. But don't expect them to act or change anytime soon.